Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. So I started my solar research literally years ago and I'm finally ready. It took me that long. I wasn't continually working on it and it just took me so long because I didn't know like the questions to ask. I didn't know what I needed to know, you know, and uh, trying to get to where you don't know where you need to be is really hard. So anyway, I've been researching it off and on uh, for for years now and I'm finally ready to start my various solar projects and I wanted to put all of the information that I've learned myself together in a few different videos in a way that's organized that at least I would easily be able to learn from. So I hope that uh, these next uh, series of four videos is going to help you prepare for your uh, getting your solar systems up and working. So this series of four videos is going to consist of the first one being about panels and charge controllers, which is this video. Then there's a video on AC and DC power and inverters and converters. Then the third video is going to be all about batteries. And the fourth video is going to be how you can figure out your personal and very specific electric usage, you know, depending on the season or, you know, by day or by year so that you can know what you need to, uh, you know, all everything that you need for your system, like how much energy you're going to use, how much you need, how much you might not need. So that, that video will be on that. And then I'm going to do a video where I'm going to build a solar panel from scratch, <laughs> kind of just because I love doing projects like that and I think I'm going to learn a lot. And then the next video, which might be uh, multiple videos, but the next uh, series will be a full installation of pre-manufactured uh, solar panels from Grape Solar on my RV. So a standard solar setup is going to include your solar panels, a charge controller, your batteries and an inverter. Some technicians and engineers or you know solar enthusiasts wouldn't ever actually call this a solar system. Instead of saying solar they would actually might prefer to say PV and PV stands for photovoltaic. So they might call the entire setup a PV system and even the panels would be PV panels instead of solar panels. Some people might think that solar panels would strictly refer to panels that heat pipes to heat water in a home. So photovoltaic or PV is referring just to the production of electrical current that's generated from the solar rays. So now you know, if you see PV somewhere, you hear somebody you know, say PV panels, you know it pretty much means what most people would refer to as solar panels or you know, a solar setup. So let's talk about the different kinds of panels that you're gonna find. There's monocrystalline cells and then there's polycrystalline cells and then those cells make up a panel. So the monocrystalline cells They've always been more efficient. They used to be much more efficient than poly polycrystalline cells. The monocrystalline cells, because of the way that they're cut, the cell is usually square, and then the polycrystalline cells are usually rectangular. So you can kind of glance at a solar panel or PV panel and kind of know if it's a, a monocrystalline or polycrystalline. Even though nowadays the polycrystalline technology has caught up with the monocrystalline, the monocrystalline still is a teeny bit more efficient and therefore it's also a little more expensive. It's also more efficient space-wise, so a smaller amount of, of the actual cell can create more electricity than uh, a polycrystalline cell. A really good price for solar panels uh, would be about a dollar per watt. So if you have a 150 watt solar panel, a pretty good price would be about $150. So it used to be much more expensive. It used to be about $5 a watt. So technology's made some great advances, fortunately. You can also find solar panels down to like 75 cents a watt. And you can even find them lower if you're willing to buy used panels, which could be a great option. However, uh, take note that when you're buying used panels, it's possible that somebody pulled them off their roof 
because they were recalled and then you know somebody else got a hold of them and now they're selling them and you know not telling you that there was a recall or maybe they don't even know so maybe keep that in mind if you're gonna buy used solar panels so some people say to buy your panels based on your charge controller and we're gonna go over charge controllers in a second and to get your charge controller based on your personal need so when you're ready to get your solar panels it's recommended you know depending on your charge controller to get it uh, according to specifications whether it be wattage or voltage and there's a really specific reason to look at these specifications because once you buy you know the first set of panels for your array you're going to want to maintain like those same specifications depending on whether it's hooked up in series or in parallel so what's series versus parallel the way you hook it up either in series or parallel hook your solar panels together you can either maintain or increase your current or voltage in your panels connecting your panels in series is going to increase your voltage and connecting your panels in parallel is going to increase your current or amps all right so let's talk about what happens when you mix panels in one array that have different wattages different amps and different volts when you mix panels of altering amps in a an array that is connected in series let's say you have one panel that's three amps one panel that's three and a half amps the the lower one is going to drag the higher one down so you're losing you know the amperage on the probably a little bit more expensive panel so it's the same thing that happens when you have an array that's hooked together in parallel with volts if you have like a 15 volt panel uh, connected in parallel to a 25 volt panel it's going to drag the 25 5 volt panel down to 15 so these are really big um, because if you look at like the mathematics of power so power is watts it's amps times volts equal watts so to to adjust those numbers that are being multiplied together makes a really big difference in power so it's not quite the same thing when you when you're mixing wattages in in panels so if you have an array that's connected in series and your amps are the same so nothing's being dragged down but you have two panels with you know let's say 100 watts and 150 watts some people say it doesn't make a difference and it doesn't it's not as big of a difference but actually there is a difference what happens is the difference between the alternating watts so 100 and 150 that's a difference of 50 watts 50% 50 of that is going to be decreased from your final power so there would be 25 watts that you lose but when we go back and look at the mathematical formula to change the watts which is the um, multiplication of the amps and volts it doesn't it doesn't change it as much as changing the numbers that are being multiplied together so it's it's nominal but it definitely exists and the same thing will go for if you have an array connected in parallel uh, with the same volts but you know the same thing like let's say a 100, 100 watt panel and 150 watt panel you're going to have you're going to lose like 25 watts in the end connecting those uh, together in parallel there's another thing to consider when you're going to mix and match wattages if you have a MPPT controller which we're going to go over controllers in just a second but if you have an MPPT controller it's uh, it's reasoning or uh, its little brain is going to try to find uh, the, the best uh, wattage and um, currents or amps to bring electricity in at so if you've got different wattages of panels it's going to slightly confuse your MPPT controller and you could lose a little bit of efficiency just because of that 
Another thing to keep in mind when you're going out and looking at solar panels you want to get and uh, quantities and stuff like that, keep in mind that your RV roof has limited real estate. And you might think, you know, it's let's say 34 feet by eight feet, but it's not because you probably aren't gonna put a solar panel over your air conditioning unit. I mean, if you did, you'd have to build like a, a tall stand and then driving down the road, that would be incredibly inefficient and dangerous, you know, that you'd lose your panel. Uh, you've also got, your uh, vents in the ceiling and you know those let in a consider considerable amount of light and you wouldn't want to lose that light so so you have to see what you can actually fit on your rv before buying a ton and then you have nowhere to put them consider too that solar panels get hot they don't just get hot because there's sun beaming down on them and they're metal but they get hot because they're actually producing current and electricity so they get hot much faster than you know just a piece of metal so if you are putting them really close to your roof you're putting a a warm thing kind of on your roof so depending on where you live you know maybe that's good maybe that's bad maybe you want to in warmer locations raise up the solar panels a little bit you can to cool them off like in the middle of the day in the middle of the summer you can actually go outside and spray them with water just to keep them cool and help with efficiency of producing electricity because they work better when they're cooler and also just to remove the heat so you don't have like these big panels hot panels on your roof so you're definitely going to want a charge controller included in your PV setup a charge controller goes between the solar panels or the PV panels and the batteries. If you just had the panels connected to the batteries during the highest productivity phase of the day, so like right in the middle of the day when the solar panels are creating the most electricity, it would just send all that electricity into the batteries and if you got too much it would just burn your batteries out. So the charge controller goes in the middle and it kind of controls how much charge the batteries get, which protects the batteries. There's two kinds of charge controllers. There's MPPT and PWM. So the MPPT is a little bit smarter, you could say, than the PWM. The MPPT charge controller will can take, you know, extra electricity and it, and it regulates it a little more evenly to the batteries. And if you've got a really productive time when not a lot of electricity is being drawn from the batteries, it will store that until it can feed the remaining charge to the batteries. A PWM charge controller is only going to take so much of a charge and then it's just going to dump what's not being used. So you're going to lose like 10 to 20 percent of efficiency with a PWM and you can actually even gain 20 to 10 percent efficiency in a MPPT controller just because it's managing it a little better and uh, it's a lot smarter with you know what wattages you're using what voltage and it can really manage that a little bit better if you are going to have a system that creates like more than 200 watts then you're probably going to want to get an MPPT controller they are more expensive than the PWM ones however if you're just doing something like in your backyard you know like running a pump of some sort and you know you just kind of want it run all day or you know you only need it for short spurts of time anyway you can totally get away with a PWM charge controller so buy your panels based on your charge controller and buy your charge controller based on your need and again I'm going to do a video on how to determine what you actually need and what you use to start building and planning what kind of PV system you'll want to put on your RV. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for the next videos in this series including more information on batteries, more information on AC, DC and inverters and converters plus the build from scratch of a solar panel as well as the full installation on my RV. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me and the RV Living community on my website at pippinings.com where you can also get your Keep It Simple bumper sticker. You can also connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you.